All right, welcome, Hairbrain Nation. Uh, I'm here with my good friend Lisa, uh, hey who, <laughs> who is the co-founder of Street Pin. Hello. And you guys might recognize that product. Um, I'm going to be working a crop shape on her. Um, taking it down quite short. We want a new, fun summer look. You know, something that still has nice, soft outlines, right? Yes. Keeping it really pretty. Um, and you, you can work this shape a lot of different ways, but, you know, the idea with a crop is you're taking it down short, yeah. all right? You're letting the hair do its natural thing, something really easy to style, a little bit of product, and it's all good. Um, with the shape itself, I want to keep something, like I said, with a little bit of a softer outline, so I'll be working a little bit more of a layering angle rather than graduating it in really tight. Um, through the top, I sectioned off just following the curvature of the head, you know, taking the uh, parietal bone back to the crown area. And, you know, with that, I'm going to start the layers on the underneath. Um, I haven't really, I mean, I'm going to let the underneath tell me what to do up on the top. I haven't really come up with a predetermined why I exactly want to cut it this way or that way. I'll work into it. You know, having the understanding of the shape allows me to make variations as I go because I understand what I'm trying to do um, and I don't have to abide by, you know, a very, very, very strict um, approach really. You know, I have a lot of options here. Let's get your phone going before yeah. we get started. Okay. Yeah, it's, so we need to... Uh, it's saying swipe left for comments, but I've swiped left Tell my thumb sore and it's Randy, not, uh, <laughs> it's not is going. going to be working two phones today. So I'm just going to get them set up here so I can answer all your questions. We tried to do a little bit last week, or actually uh, earlier this week, with you know, out having the questions, and it just wasn't quite the same. No. I mean, I love to hear from you way guys. More fun. Yeah. Way more fun. Way this more way. fun with questions. <laughs> way more fun. So getting started, I'm going to take the sections on the vertical but just slightly angular. The shape is a little bit more rounded, more suitable for you know, feminine looks. Whereas you know, with men's shapes, we try to work very flat and square. You know, the subtlety, the, the subtle differences would be a little bit more roundness. <laughs> Lucy said curvature. great model. Um, <laughs> hey Lucy, so I'm gonna put hey, like a really hard part with the razor right through the curvature of the head, back and fish hook it around the crown area. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work some lines through the bottom. Something really, you know, kind of sexy but tribal at the so same time. Oh, <laughs> I can't go home now. No, Lisa, Lisa will be living on my sofa yeah. until it grows out, and I will be in hiding somewhere in South America. <laughs> All right, so, you know, I've, I've cut Lisa's hair quite often. Um, you know, I, I would suggest if it's a new client, you know, check the growth patterns, check the head shape. Lisa has a great head shape um, to go short. Um, you know, also check for any, you know, just awkward growth patterns through the crown. We don't want any surprises. But like I said, I mean, I've cut Lisa's hair, you know, for quite some time, so I'm very familiar with it. Now, right there, I think it's a good shot of the angle. You can see the angle just coming out a little bit longer. So just when you're cutting this short, just the subtleties, the subtle changes in angles can make the biggest difference. Right, so we're working in very tight parameters, um, and you know one of the things I love about short hair it's very unforgiving. You know anything that you do that you know wasn't meant to be is really easy to see. Right, so just again taking the weight off the top. Hey G. Hey, what's up, Gerard? How's it going? You enjoying your uh, your summer vacation down down at the beach? He'll hey, like that G. one. <laughs> and you have a high from Haircraft. Uh... Ah, uh, nice, nice. Thanks, guys. Coming from Haircraft, you know. And uh, I just want to again thank everybody for watching. We had some great comments on Thursday about people like you know that had a little bit of a break, you know, in their day, and they could go into the uh, staff room and watch some education, you know. And that's just really uh, what it's all about, um, you know. And if you can do that at your leisure, I know Saturdays are typically a little bit busier, and we don't all have the luxury of getting lunch breaks in this industry. Gerard's heading to the beach. Oh, uh, Gerard's heading to the beach. I'll meet you down there in a couple hours, G. I'll get done my haircut, put on my shorts, head down to the beach. Lindsay Doney is saying she's oh, so nice. excited for Lisa. Oh, hey, Lindsay. Yeah, great, th great to excited. hear from all of our friends yeah. there. I think Lindsay's probably working down at Art Salon in, uh, I think she works in the PB location, which is an amazing location. Yeah. You know, I've had the uh, privilege of going down there and working with Robert's staff. 
you know, doing education. Um, just an amazing vibe with the salon. I mean, I love the downtown salon just as much, but, you know, for me, the PB vibe is just where it's at, you know, right by the beach and hanging out. All right, so again, you can see, now I'm starting to get into a little bit more hair, but again, the angle, you know, angling my knuckles out away from the bottom, so I'm not really cutting much off down through here, right, because the last haircut I graduated in, right, so now what I'm doing is I'm layering it through. So just again, those subtleties, the subtlety of your finger angle is what's going to create you know, the differences in the softness. Um, you can also see the weight line through here. Lisa, so I, Gerard had a question for you, sorry. Um, will you be speaking at Beacon? Yes, I will be speaking at Beacon, Gerard. Uh, it's Monday, July 10th, and we are going to be talking about finding your deepest dream. So yes. it's gonna be pretty exciting for them. Well, you're a good one to talk about that because you did something that was nearly impossible in the industry, creating your, your brand and growing. Mm -hmm. You know, what you did was pretty, uh, nobody invites you to that table. Right, absolutely. You have to create yeah, your own yep, place. Absolutely, nobody invites you to that table, yeah. Um, Lucy and I created Straight Pins Studio about four years ago, and we're doing very well. And in fact, I have a little plug for oh, you. Oh, sure. Thank we you. We just added uh, these new little cosmetic bags oh, cool. to the lineup. They'll oh, be on the website yeah. either today or tomorrow. Um, they say, we miss you too. For anybody that's ever lost a bobby pin in their uh, life. Um, just about everybody. Yeah. everybody. And it holds, holds the little mini kit beautifully. So, um, yeah, oh, good stuff. Nice. Good stuff. And you guys yes. are so smart. Thank we you. We love what you do. Thank you so much. And I know you guys are all old friends, you and Gerard. And yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny because... Now uh, you're becoming one of my friends. Yeah, we, have, <laughs> we all used to work together. You know, and again, going back to the Sassoon days, um, you know, Gerard and Lisa and myself with, you know, some amazing other people in the industry, um, Lucy and DJ and Tracy and, you know, just one big happy family. And now... You know, we're all still friends and we all still hang out, but I think what's even more exciting is some of the great things that, you know, some of us have had the opportunity to do in this industry. Yeah. Certainly a talented group of friends. Okay, so now just getting past the curvature. So again, just slightly over directing forward, right, to compensate for the curve of the head. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to step around a little bit more as I work. I'm always keeping my body in position so that I'm combing the hair straight into Are you changing your center. finger angle or just the over direction? Uh, just the over direction. The finger angle will stay the same, okay. um, but because the length of the section has now grown because of the hairline, um, you know, it, it may look a little bit different, but I'm still keeping that same angle true to the front. And if some of this bottom doesn't reach, it's just not time to cut it. Oh, cool. Right? So I'm not going to kind of try to get everything at once. I'm going to work this first phase, and then I'll probably come back through, in through the hairline. You know, I think sometimes people want to try to cut every single hair, you know, every time. Where, you know, you're working an angle... Can we spin and, her 180 yeah. degrees around? Yeah. Just so that you're standing mm -hmm. over there. Yeah, that's perfect. You know, sometimes we have to be patient to, uh, you know, get some of the hair like down here that didn't reach in the next part of the haircut. So I'm keeping that line still relatively flat. You know, staying true to the angle of the section. But uh, also with the graduated shape, last time you'll notice there's a bit more hair in this area because it dropped down. So now I'm following it up higher, right? So I'm going to be taking the crown area just a little bit shorter. All right, so again, stepping around each section. You see that elevation, you know, coming out. I mean, if I had to give it to a degree, I would say, you know, roughly 90. I try not to get, you know, when I study hair um, and when I, you know, uh, was learning hair, I would think more in degrees. Whereas now, I mean, obviously I understand that, yeah, you know, there is a certain degree that my fingers are elevated to. But, you know, I focus more on where my hand is in relationship to the head and to the section, and you know, getting the proportion right, 
and thinking more about proportion than about numbers. But again, understanding that you know, when learning, we need to have those numbers to kind of keep us in line. But then once we have an understanding of what we're doing, you know, it's time not to think about it. It's time to get your hand in the right position for the head shape and for, you know, what you're trying to achieve. Right. So following that down, and again, you can see I'm not really cutting much below the occipital at this time. Again, I'm working that upper panel, whatever reaches in that finger angle, that's what I'm cutting. Um, I also want you to kind of notice... Um, you know, Sorry, everybody, I'm not getting comments on either phone now. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, I can talk old, quite a bit. Good old Facebook Live. Know. And, I'll try um, to come up with some questions that people might have. Yeah. I mean, well, you Usually know, people to... have asked about what scissors you're using by now. Yep. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> what, what comb are you using? What scissors? Well, these are all available on Hairbrained uh, Pro Shop, right? So these are the B-Max Special Edition made specifically to the specifications of Mr. Gerard Scarpese. <laughs> um, beautiful scissor. Five, this is the 5.5. Um, there's also a uh, 6 version for those that like something a little bit longer. Um, I find with anything in that range, you can kind of do pretty much everything. And, and then the comb itself is also, you know, hair-brained design, which is great. Um, now, just as I pass the crown area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back and work through the other side. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just section this side off. Notice not really working with clips. Um, you know, I've uh, studied and worked you know, uh, in barbering for quite a while. And one of the things within my training, you know, with uh, barbering, we try to eliminate the use of clips um, as much as possible. So I can rely on just combing the hair over, getting it out of the way, keep, keeping it nice and clean, nice and wet. That's great, thanks. Can you see, um, can I trade you? Oh, you got the questions. Look at this technology. All right, we've got another, uh, hey, another Rick, attempt my, here. My phone was working, and Randy just broke it. Okay. So now, be careful, because he might break your phone, too. <laughs> He's got that kinetic energy. Yeah. Uh, that was a fun connection. Uh, collection kinetic, I forget all about oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so also, you know, notice, guys, this is something that is a, it's a papif to me. It's like, when we're cutting hair in the salon, you know, at all times, you should try to make your client look as pretty as possible. I hate when I see hair all scrunched up and all messy and through yeah. the front. Clients sitting there going like, oh, my God, I look awful. I hope no one I know <laughs> walks in. You know, sitting in the front of the salon in the picture window looking all, you know, kind of crazy with their hair all matted and stuff like that. So I try to keep it photographic at all times. Um, and I think this goes back to my video training and my stage training, because just when that hair doesn't look so pretty is when Randy comes. Now, he would never, <laughs> he would never, Randy would never do this. He knows better. But, you know, when a photographer from, you know, one of your uh, magazines or social media comes and snaps a picture and posts it on Instagram, you're standing there doing this thing that looks absolutely awful. And then people are looking at it, not realizing that you're in the middle of a haircut. Yeah. So we keep it kind of pretty, you know, and it's not finished, but at the same time. I can't time, tell you how important that is. Yeah. You know, you know, there's for, a lot of variables that you have to think about while you're shooting a picture, and if yeah. the hair is nice and neat, not you know, just the section you're working my on. My shoulder's going to probably get in your way here, Randy, okay. so you may want to shoot. I'll switch sides. Well, how about if I do this? Yeah, it's right good. Right there. It's great. Just, and uh, we have a couple of comments. Yeah. Uh, Patty Gibbons loves your tiny water bottle. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't know that who. Is the, yeah. That is the best. I'm not sure who bottle. I stole that off of, Patty, so I can't tell you where to get one, but... Uh, but that person doesn't have one either. Yes. Hey, gee, uh, yeah. I was swiping left. I think the connection was uh, too slow or something. I would get the notification that I could swipe left, but it wasn't All right, working. so you see now working this side, the really only thing that has changed is uh, my finger position and my hand position. So get a wide shot of this, hey, Randy, because yep. this is important. Yep. Um, so you, you still see the elbow is parallel to the shoulder, right? I'm not here. I'm not cutting like this. I'm not putting my armpit in my client's face. I'm relaxing the shoulder and just letting the wrist bend slightly to get the hand at the right position. Cool. Right? So, but again, on the first side, when I was cutting, I was following my knuckles. Now what I'm doing is I'm following the fingertips down. Same angle, same elevation, right? So this is my little lever here, my feeler gauge where my uh, ring finger and pinky are just lightly resting on uh, Lisa's temple. And then I can just pull that out and just kind of tilt my hand to get it into 
the right position. Amazing. Yeah, so Gerard had asked me to share a little information. I'm going to be helping uh, hairdressers along with my good friend Marie Claire Bozant. Um, we're, going to, we're planning an online course for uh, hairdressers who want to learn to, to shoot better photos and video um, of their work. I'll keep you abreast of the situation on when that's going to launch. Uh, it, it will be coming up soon, shaping up nicely. That's cool. Sid Sotung says he misses his Wego. Ah, uh, yes, Sid, I kept all mine. And, yeah, uh, it's, it's like a, a relic now. Fabiola um, says hello from Gibson's. Nice. Thank you, and uh, hello to you, Fabiola. All right, so again, you can see just working that in really lightly, taking that angle up. Got a nice little slice on my finger here, but then again, I cut myself quite often. That angle's beautiful. Yeah, that's a great line. You know, and it's another great thing about short hair. It just really, you know, you can place it and you can see it. It's very visual. You know, you can see exactly where the hair is falling, exactly where it needs to be. Got a lot of Oklahoma people, mm -hmm. Central PA. Really great step-by-step, -step, Mark Marcel is saying. Uh, North Carolina, Jennifer Hutchins. This is so important for the visual learners out there, Sarah, Sarah Jane says. Yeah. And, I mean, you can, you know, because you can talk about it, and we do, trust me, talk about hair for hours and hours and hours and fashion and, you know, different things. But, you know, to see it and then to ultimately to experience it, you know, is the great thing. Gerard and I just taught um, one of our uh, scissor versus razor classes here in downtown L.A., and, you know, it was great feedback, on you know, that. great feedback. And then also what I think the hairdressers really liked was that it was hands on. We did not stand there and demonstrate for four hours on a haircut and then, you know, have you do one haircut for another four hours and call it a day. We went through eight haircuts a day. <laughs> You know, four scissor, four razor, where the students g had the opportunity to work hands on with our guidance and our instruction, you know, from start to finish throughout the whole uh, haircut. You know, and I think that's the next step. We, we uh, are very visual, but also, you know, in applying the haircut and being able to do it. You know, and having, you know, your mentor, your coach, the teacher, whatever you want to call the person, you know, they are guiding you along the way so we can see your hands, we can see your movement, we can see everything that you're doing and give you, you know, the instruction that's going to help you make it easier. You've got Dubai and uh, Croatia, of course, in the house. All right. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome from Dubai and Croatia. Always good to have you guys on board. You know, I know Julian does not cut past his second knuckle. He just cuts his second knuckle. Yeah, I just cut my second, <laughs> I just cut my second knuckle right off. I mean... You, you only know. do that so many times. Right. Well, no, no. I think <laughs> it makes it smaller and smaller. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, 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 removing, you're removing density. But, uh, you know, I mean, hey, you play with sharp objects, you're yeah. going to get cut, right? Yeah. Um, Patty Gibbons says call a medic. Yeah. I don't think anybody can even see it. No. Nah. No, it's just, it's... Barcelona. Love Barcelona. All right, so now just coming through and going to uh, blend this into the other side. So how would you, how would you vary your, your finger angle and over direction for different head shapes? Well, you know, if, think about this as being like um, positive and negative space, right? So we think about the head shape as being a series of curvatures. Right now, some areas may have a tendency of being flatter. So if something's flat, it's reduced. So it's negative space. You need to add to that space to make it more dominant, right? So, so you can do that on the vertical and the horizontal. Vertical and the horizontal. So where the head protrudes, in essence, you're taking it a little bit shorter. Where the head flattens, in essence, you're leaving it a little bit wider. 
a little bit longer. So you're kind of playing this kind of balancing game with the shape of the skull to make it look more rounded and oval. Cool. You know, so that was the thing. It's like we cut a shape to enhance the natural bone structure, right? We're all slightly asymmetric. We're all slightly off proportion. But the haircut should help hide that, should help balance that. So by balancing it, again, it's just, again, it's positive and negative space. Where the head is negative, we have to add. Where the head's positive, we need to reduce, right? Cool. It's the simplest way I can put it. Awesome. Lindsay Doney says, great breakdown. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. So just picking up where I left off, had to stop and, uh, you know, do that explanation. So I just kind of backtrack so I remember where I was. And then again, you see taking that all the way down, whatever reaches into that angle. All right, now from here, we're going to start to work the cross check. So I just want to wet Lisa's hair down a little bit. Now, with the cross check, I mean, you know, we, we always say, well, we take opposite sections, right, which is true. So I still want to keep a little bit of a curvature to the sectioning. So just tilt the head down a little bit, again, separate. And now I'm going to work with my sections diagonal back the other way, right? And this is also going to help take the hairline in. So you see I'm just cutting in, angling it with the natural uh, shape of the uh, nape area. So through the bottom, because I haven't really cut much, I know I'm going to be cutting a little bit more. And then what this will do is this will blend into the top length. Dan and Molina said, I'm a student and all of your videos are so helpful. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. You know, and I mean, as a student, I think the, well, for all hairdressers, but especially a student, going through that classic series is so important, right? And trust me, guys, I was always, you know, the one I wanted to, you know, run before I could walk. Um, and, you know, I, I thought, well, I don't need to learn those basics. I want to be creative, <laughs> right? Yeah. But my teachers really instilled in me the importance of, you know, all the basics that we do is what gives you the ability to be creative, right? So creative haircutting is no different than classic haircutting, but it's just how you go about arranging it. Um, it's not a different, it's not, you know, like new techniques and things like that. It's still broken down in a very methodical method. Um, it's still something that is very, you know, clean and precise when needed to be. We have a question from Jay Wheeler. Yep. Uh, what about the calyx and swirls? How would you address them? Well, you have to accept them, Jay, <laughs> right? So at this length, what we're doing is we're exposing and allowing the hair to do what the hair naturally wants to do. Right? So if there's a swirl, you have to go with it and you have to let it do its thing. Then at the end of the haircut, you might you know, kind of refine it and you know, adjust it accordingly. But you know, with cutting this hair this short, I would never want to try to then you know, take away its own personality. Right? So this is allowing the hair to be itself. Cool. Uh, Mark Marcel, um, I think he's wondering whether he wants to keep watching because he wants to know what you're going to do with the top. Is it going to be really short on the top fringe as well? <laughs> he wants to know how exciting this haircut is going to be. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not giving that up, man. Uh, I would, no, you better keep watching. <laughs> We're all wondering. Yeah, because... Susan Palti said, excellent. <laughs> Okay, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm going to cut the top off, <laughs> if you're wondering. But, um, you know, I mean, I could keep it long and keep it, I think, equally as exciting. But uh, I will be, if you're looking for a short haircut. If short haircuts scare you, just... Mark's laughing. Yeah. <laughs> if short haircuts scare you, just go away right now, because um, we're going to be cropping the top down. <laughs> and Patty's laughing. Oh. She's saying, you got to wait to see. Yeah. Let me... Uh... How's that angle for you, Randy? Yeah, that's great. Okay, good. So again, just starting through this hairline. And again, you can see getting into the bottom, I'll be cutting slightly more. Right? Because I haven't really cut much off of this area yet. Because of the first pass through, I was just working that upper top part of the section. 
you know. It's kind of funny, you know, with, with this, because I'm doing what I guess would be the less exciting work first. I'm doing the bulk work first. Um, but in my mind, I know I'm going to be cropping this down. Um, and, you know, by doing that, it, I mean, I can't say there's a real <laughs> advantage. I could have went right to the top and have done it. But, you know, I want to get this all done, get the, uh, the particular you know, hairlines and things like that, and let the length kind of dictate what happens up on the top. But there's no right or wrong. Um, the classic crop that I did on uh, the doll head, you know, and uh, fundamentally and structurally, we start right through the top center with a mohawk strip, right? So from crown to forehead, and you cut that and pivot off of it, right? And that's the classic approach, you know, so, I mean... That would be perfectly fine to get to that first. Lindsay had a really good point. She's like, if, if short hair scares you, you should tune in. And that, to that point, you should share it with somebody who you know yeah. short hair scares yeah. them. Yeah. Um, we have a question from um, Matthew yep. from Croatia. <laughs> All right. um, with lightened and grown out hair, do you alter the cut to play with the color variations that will come from cutting closer to the roots at certain areas? So yeah. you, I think you were talking about this earlier um, with Lisa that... Um, you were you were well aware of where her color is when you're doing yeah. this, right? Yeah, and um, I'm a true believer that it has to look good today. Yeah, right. So um, you know, uh, Lisa didn't have the opportunity to get her color done um, prior to the cut. So my job is to make it look good at this moment. Um, once it's colored, you know, that's fine. It won't make it look bad. But I don't want her walking out the salon or walking around with, you know. Um, an unfinished look for two days. Yeah, sure. You know, so it happens to us all the time in the salon. We have a client, you know, and they just don't have the time to get the color done that day. Um, but again, we have to make it look good that day. And yeah, you know, roots and kind of a little bit grown out can be cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can see, just sitting that hairline in, get it nice and. Uh, Head hugging, so to speak. I love that head hugging layers. Nice way of putting it, but just kind of tailored, you know, and just tapered a little bit right into the natural hairline. Kenny McMillan is uh, commenting on how clean your work is and how clean your partings are. Yeah, thank, thank you, Kenny. I think at one time you told me that that was the more important thing, the hand, the, the hand that's parting the hair and the holding the hair, yeah. combing the hair, that the scissor is a lot easier to... Yeah, it all starts from the section. Um, if your sectioning isn't clean, um, you're going to have an inconsistent haircut, you know, no matter what, right? You know, because the hair will be coming from inconsistent areas to try to create a consistent shape. You know, so always starting with clean sections, keeping everything really neat um, is definitely going to benefit your work and the overall haircut. I'm very uh, meticulous, you know, when it comes to all haircuts, but especially, you know, short haircuts, because again, your margin for error. All right, we've is got straight less. pin on here commenting now. Hey. Oh. It all starts from the section. It all starts with the. <laughs> You've section. You got to carry those clips, right? Yep. In your new straight pin bag. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> A new little mini kit, available on Hairbrain. Yeah. Uh, all right, so just about finished up with this portion of the haircut. Um, I'll do a quick recap, right? So right now I'm back into the second phase, the second pass through of the haircut. Um, I started out in through the temple area, working my shape diagonal, following the curvature of the head. You know, you could say, yeah, kind of like a 90 degree layering. Um, once I followed that through on both sides, I started out in the hairline and then coming back through the opposite way and now passing through. So the first phase, watch my hand guys, went up. The second phase starts at the bottom and works through. Cool. Right, so phase one, phase two. Awesome. Right, so we think about that swirl. Um, you know, you imagine the shape surrounding the head and how it surrounds it. And ultimately, then you're doing it one 
section at a time. Hey, Aaron. Aaron Williams is saying hey. <laughs> Hello, Aaron. All right, so I hope you kept in uh, tune. What was his name? Was it uh, our friend that wasn't sure if he was going to hang out with us? Oh, uh, yeah, he's still here. Oh, good. Yeah, good. he's still watching. Well, Ger Gerard's seeing some questions that aren't coming up on, uh, on Lisa's phone here. Mm -hmm. um, he, he said there's been some questions about how you, uh, why you work front to back or vice versa. Well, ultimately you think, you know, you, you kind of look at it like you start at the shortest point of the haircut. And, you know, I'm looking at the flow of the cut. So, you know, the first pass through from front to back, even though it's in similar length, I can't say that it's longer in the back, you know, the flow of the haircut works this way, right? So I start in the front here and then over direct the hair slightly forward and then follow through to the crown, right? So that's the shape. So it's getting slightly longer towards Slight, the back. Slightly, slightly on the, longer. On the top half yeah. of the haircut. Now we're talking, you know, we're talking less than sixteenths of an inch now, guys, and Gerard this loves that all, term. This is all very subtle. Yeah, very, just, it's all about the Nuance. subtleties. Yeah. You know, but also about the flow of the haircut, okay. right? So, you, you know, again, you think of the flow. The flow sits in here, right? And it works around. Yeah. And then it sits in tight here at the nape. And then it works around. So phase one, I'm working with the movement of the haircut. Mm -hmm. Phase two, working with the movement of the haircut. And I notice that's still going to allow you to keep length in the corners. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, watch my hand. Yeah. Right? So the hand follows around, takes it in tight in the temple, and follows around. Oh, we've got, we've got Gerard's mom watching. Hey, Flo. <laughs> oh. Hey. Hey, how are you? It's so good to see you, even though I can't see you. Yeah. <laughs> Flo so is awesome. That, it's so good that you see us. Well, make sure you let us know if we do a good job, Flo. Gerard's been training us. Yeah. So anything that we do that is not 100% correct, it's, on him. it's Gerard's fault. No, he only takes credit for the good things. We've yeah. talked about this. Yeah. Well, we're just, putting the, we're just putting all the pressure on him now. Yeah. Man, I remember being in your basement... Uh, in Brooklyn with Gerard when, when dial-up was happening. And awesome. Gerard's like, look, hey, I'm starting this thing. It's called Hairbrain. <laughs> and what do you guys think? You know, it's going to be this community of hairdressers. And we were down in his basement. It was like so cool to be a part of that, just that launch. The grassroots you know? launch. The grassroots yeah, it was cool those days. We used to have like a like hundred people on right? and posting whatever they wanted. <laughs> no worries because nobody was seeing it. You know, it was so really awesome. cool. All right, so what I'm looking at, guys, now I'm just looking at the length and the movement in the crown area, right? So i just taken a section uh, from side to side across the top. Uh, I'm going to break it down a little bit because I am right on the curvature of the head. Hey, Flo, go ahead and make a comment. You know, that's the next level of engagement <laughs> is uh, beyond watching. You can, you can heckle these guys. Oh, yeah. We, lo we, we, we love hecklers. We love hecklers. Right, so seeing my guideline from the underneath. Oh, you are taking the top short. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wasn't messing around. I think Lucy's on her way over here. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Sorry, Goose. <laughs> I wasn't messing around. It's going to be soft, though. Soft. Soft crop. It's going to be a soft little croppy shape. <laughs> right. So now, you know, you can kind of see, you know, just looking at the growth pattern. So there was a question earlier, well, how do you account for it? You just got to live with it, right? If I didn't want it to move and if I didn't want it to jump, well, I wouldn't cut it, right? I would leave it longer like it was. But it's about the freedom of the movement of the hair. The freedom of the movement. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> it's about the freedom of the movement, guys. <laughs> We're going to crop everyone's hair off. So uh, we... Lucy said she's in her car. Yeah. Lock the door. <laughs> Hopefully with bleach. Yeah. <laughs> right, so again, taking my guideline from the side. And then Cover your eyes, Lucy. <laughs> now, and Mark Marcel is very happy that he kept watching. Okay, I did. Good. Yay, Mark. Well, Mark, watch this because you're going to dig this, right? So now I'm going to start taking my sections this way here now. Oh, cool. So I'm going to start taking them diagonal. And this is lead. I'm not just doing this for giggles. This is uh, going to lead me to something. So now I'm taking the so length. So everything here. you do is for a reason. Everything has purpose, you know. Um, I'm going to follow this through to the fringe. 
right? And you start to see that just how that gives that lightness and layered right into the fringe area. And now I'm going to start to take the sections across further. And again, my guideline from underneath, you can see that very clearly. And how are you avoiding getting any weight line? By my elevation, okay. right? So, so I got a lift. So the first one was straight out, now I'm higher, then I'll be higher again. Cool. So I'm constantly elevating the hair. Here goes the bias that I cut on her last time, getting rid of that length through the front. Oh, it feels so good already. Yeah. <laughs> but the, uh, and you can see how it just arches with the hairline because it all blends through really nicely. So it just works into that very soft front length. I think I got about one more section. You see now it's completely curved onto the other side. So I'm leading to a disconnection through the top, guys, right? And, you know, rather than l sectioning it off, I know the shape of it. I can see it. It's like this triangle through here. So rather than sitting here and trying to cut a perfect or a section of perfect triangle, I just work to the one angle of the triangle and stop because I know where I want it. And then I come back through the other side of the triangle. <laughs> Florence and then I will have take the care of any problems we have with Gerard, she said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, Flo. Thanks so much for being here and supporting Hairbrain. It's so nice to see your name pop up and over the years. Right. It's more than an inch, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your hair is long. That's a hairdresser's inch. Yeah. So again, taking my guideline from the back here. Yeah. I can spin around. Okay. That's good. And then following that through onto the other side. And again, that leads me right into the softness through the fringe area. Right, so layering right into it keeps it very weightless. Okay, we have a comment from uh, Deanna Lynn. Uh huh. Those haircuts intimidate me, especially in the crown, but I understand what you're saying about following the movement of the hair. So is the disconnect is to keep it longer on the top and sort of blended? Um, I guess the disconnect is going to give me... Um, a little bit of an extended length that she'll be able to kind of play around with. It's not going to be, um, you know, really dramatic, dramatically longer, I should say, but um, I'll leave it a little bit longer so that it can kind of fall over so that you can create different dimension within the haircut. Um, where everything's blended all together, you know, you, you, you have one solid unit. But then when you start to play with disconnections, you know, you'll, you'll have different shapes within it. So it's almost like building blocks. Yeah, great. Yeah? So uh, my son plays with Legos quite often, and he loves to build stuff. And, you know, just you, you, you think about the different tiers when you add things to it. You know, you're adding mass. Um, you know, I guess in ways that... Uh, you know, someone who styles hair, you know, would add different pieces into it. You know, to create... How's it feeling, Lisa? Oh, man, it feels so good. Yeah. <laughs> I was ready. It's, Your hair was long. Like, You're used to short hair. It got hot and SoCal, and I was like, it's time to come off. It's yeah. It's got to go. It's looking Sorry, super, ador super adorable. <laughs> Right, so there's the other side of my triangle. So, you know, again, you have this piece here that's not cut, which if you put it together, you have the base of the triangle and then the apex of the triangle towards oh, the front. Oh, cool. You know, we'll just leave that a little bit longer so you can kind of see how it, just how it starts to mold a little bit. Will you be point cutting this at the end? Um, so he's, uh, um, Gil's asking. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. Uh, mostly, uh, I would say, through the outlines. Um, but I, I might have to do a little bit of refinement when I see that crown, if it jumps, you know, so I might have to mold it in with some uh, freehand cutting. Gerard's saying now we can see those beautiful eyes. Uh, 
He's so smooth. I'm not sure if he's talking about yours or Lisa's. You guys both have beautiful eyes. I just made an assumption. Uh, Thanks, Gerard. (laughs) Sorry, Jules. That's right. He he told he was telling me about my eyes yesterday. I know he's got a big old boy crush on me. Yeah, him. I'm showing him your eyes just in, case he, just in case he misses you. Look deep into my eyes. All right, so there's that top piece, right? And I'm playing with the old length that I have. Um, what great design! You know, and I, I don't such great design. I cut her hair last time, so I know it's cut clean. You know, not sounding arrogant, but I mean, I did it. Um, but if I didn't, I'm just going to go lift that up and just lightly square that off, right? So you can see the disconnection now, right? So we have the shorter length underneath, then the longer length. I love this. You know, you're not just arbitrarily leaving a, a panel no. long. You know how it's going to move and you know how it's going to live on her head and hair is not going to fall over the back and, yeah. you know, because of the way it's growing out of the top. And that's, that's the key, guys. I mean... You know, somewhere along the line, disconnection became, oh, I'm just going to not cut that piece. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it's, it's about the planning of it, and everything has to work together. Oh, Haircraft, don't worry. The video is going to be available. She has to go. Uh, she blocked herself out, actually, to watch. Oh, awesome. Uh, but you've been talking. We've been having such a good time. It's taking longer than normal. Yeah. Um, the video will be available to watch uh, yeah, and basically, yeah, right if you're cutting out, what I'm going to do, just a quick one, I'm going to just flatten this through. i got one more section, then I'm going to dry the hair, then I'm going to start to work the outline. So, you know, you haven't missed much, or you won't miss much, but, um, you know, I'll be pointing and slicing through it. So I think it'll be some good stuff for you mm-hmm. to, you know, to view afterwards as well. Uh, will you leave the length at the ears or cut around it? Claudio Coloruso is asking. Uh, Claudio, I'm not going to cut it into, like, um, a very aggressive hard line. Um, I want to keep it a little bit softer, but yeah, I'm going to be refining it, I would put it. And Susan Palti said, beyond beautiful. Uh, thank you, Susan. Right, again, so there, this is another great thing about bleach. It just, <laughs> you lift it up and, you know, it, it, you can just kind of... <laughs> this hair will do whatever you want. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you can see it really well. Um, and this piece, I mean, she can kind of, you know, play around with this top. You know, and comb it different ways. So you got the beautiful softness of a crop, and then you have a longer panel in there that gives it some smoothness as well. That's yeah, so and I think great. modern hairdressing, we don't, um, you know, it's more than one dimension. It's, 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 it's multi-dimensional. Um, you know, and we always talk about, oh, it's a three dimension. Yeah, yeah, it's three dimension. But now you have three dimensions of one shape complemented with a whole separate shape and separate unit but the key is that they both have to live and work together you know you can't just have a random piece go well that's disconnection (laughs) you know again it's just the placement of it it's like color think about placement of color it has to live and breathe you know in a very specific place to make sense and to look beautiful and if it doesn't well you're just plopping color on someone's head so I'm going to just do a little blow dry with my Wigo Sid. <laughs> I'd like, you didn't save any of these? I, I find that hard to believe. This has been in my uh, you know, house for years. Now I'm getting to expose it again on uh, Hairbrain. So this brush is made... Have a great day, Susan. Susan is uh, just saying... Susan. Yeah. Uh, this brush is made by Vess. Just a real ceramic uh, brush. It goes through the hair very easily. I just want to let the hair flow. Using the head to just kind of smooth it out. Getting a little bit too much resistance with the brush, so I'm going to work with the comb to smooth the hair.
Fabiola, that is a, this is a comb now, but it was a vest brush, a nine row vest ceramic brush. Yeah, which, I mean, I've said this uh, many, many times, when that was designed, you know, it was designed so that it was like a series of combs, so that it went through the hair very easily. Um, you know, so when I start to blow dry with the comb, I get much more control. And just dealing with smaller areas of hair at the same time, or at one time. And Lisa, can I ask you, yep. when your hair is this short, do you blow your hair dry? Uh, yeah, I'll kind of hit the top a little bit, yeah. but it's so much nicer to spend three or four minutes than the 20 minutes. Sure. Cool. It's just about there. You know, uh, the hair's definitely, you know, with bleached hair, uh, it's retaining moisture quite well for a long time. <laughs> so I want to get it all dry. Yep. Shahar is asking uh, where you can get one of those posters. Uh, you can't. That's an original. Um, oh, sorry. If you notice, it's signed here. It's signed here by Vidal and numbered 62 of 100. Right, so this was a gift that... Um, so you'd have to find somebody that had one that wanted to part yeah, with it, which is find, impossible. You'd have to, I mean, yeah, there's 99 more of them out there, and that's basically it. Um, now, I don't know if they ever did these in mass production, but this was a gift from, you know, a colleague when I was working uh, at Vidal Sassoon at the Academy here in Santa Monica. That's rad. Sure, we will find a, a before picture of Lisa, and okay. we'll post the after. Oh yeah, go on my Instagram, um, at Julian Pearl, and I have a picture that Lisa sent um, of her hair prior to the haircut. Um, also, if you go on the Straight Pin Instagram, at Straight Pin LA. LA, you can also see the photograph of her hair prior to. It's combed down quite tight, but ultimately, the length through the, the underneath wasn't much, you know, uh, but the length through the top was quite long, right? So that it was like kind of worn in the side parting. So we have a question about the difference between the ceramic brush and a and a boar bristle. Yeah. Um, you know, the, they're asking about I think specifically um, why you would use what I know the boar bristle creates a little bit more tension on the hair than your your vest brush does. Yeah, I mean, the boar, the boar bristle is going to manipulate the hair more. Um, it will smooth it out. Um, you know, if the textures are very coarse, where the nylon brush is a little bit more free-flowing, um, it's not going to alter the hair nearly as much. But, um, you know, you're going to get a more natural-looking finish. Um, I mean, if you're going to style the hair, boar bristle brushes are great. Um, or if you're going to alter the texture, you know, a boar bristle, uh, me, it's hard to say, <laughs> right, sorry, a uh, boar brush is going to be great for that, you know, so it's just, I think, has a little bit of a different function, you know, I don't want to change Lisa's hair, um, she has beautiful hair, it has a great movement to it, um, it doesn't need a lot of uh, work, it doesn't need a lot of elbow grease, right, um, and, you know, I kind of question when we do things that are too difficult for an everyday look. You know, now, I mean, I love the idea of people can come in and get their hair styled, you know, for a special occasion. And, you know, that's great, but on an everyday basis, we have to be able to do something that the client can do themselves to make it look good. If it's too difficult and the client has to wear their hair in a ponytail, well, Wrong haircut. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to work the refinement. There's, there's quite a bit to do. Um, I'm still going to be keeping the outline soft, right? So um, I'm going to start out. I'm just going to lightly. I don't mind the length of the fringe, but what I want to do is I just want to bring a little bit more consistency to it. So I'm working with the tips of the scissors. So we have a comment here that... Um 
I think is a, a good one. Um, too bad that not all of us can sport short hair. I mean, Lisa definitely owns it, but um, can you speak to that, whether anybody could wear short hair with any face shape or well, um, or you think that there's some people who really shouldn't use wear short hair? No, no, I mean, I, I think, you know, as long as the texture allows, you can wear short hair. Um, so you just customize yeah, it? Yeah, it has. It's, it's more about how it's done than the concept that it's just, well, short hair is not right for me. Um, and a lot of people may have had, you know, a short haircut that wasn't right for them, you know, throughout their time. But it's not the short hair, it's the way the balance was created. Um, you know, so, yes, you, short hair exposes, right? You're exposing the face, you're exposing, you know, the features, you're exposing the shape of the skull. And as long as the person doing it, you know, has an understanding of how to do it um, on your on your face shape and on your head shape, well, then you know it can it can look really beautiful. But I can't say I, there's very I, I I can't remember a time where I was like, oh no, you can't have short hair. I don't ever remember saying that. Um, I find I more often tell people they shouldn't have long hair, right? Than they shouldn't have short hair mm. because of the fabric. Nice. You know, like it's interesting. The hair itself doesn't look good long, right? It doesn't grow nicely long because it doesn't, you know, hold a shape or the condition of it isn't good. Um, now, Lindsay Doney saying, "Oh my God, Lisa, you're so amazing." Oh, <laughs> thanks, Lindsay. <laughs> um, now, can hair be cut too short? Well, yeah. I mean, if I was to cut this too short, well, then it's going to not look right. So, again, it's finding the right balance and the right length for the individual. All about suitability. Patty Gibbons said, so true. Right, so you see keeping that little bit of softness through the edge. I've got to be careful not to keep it too long because it elongates the face too much. Like, still here, it's a little bit too long, so I've got to bring that in. Because the length from top to bottom is, is too extreme. And, you know, this is where all the detail, the scissor comb work comes in. You know, you can still take it short, but keep a soft edge. I'm just not going to cut a hard line into it. And straight pin is uh, confirming it's all about suitability. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, some of the comments I get just, you know, being out on the street with short hair is, you know, women come up to me, oh my God, that looks so amazing on you. I wish I had the guts to do that. And, that, yeah. and you know, I mean, I guess it's kind of guts, but I have always felt better with short hair. And, you know, so I don't, I don't know that struggle, I guess, but, um, you know, I think there's definitely a freedom in it. And... Flowing with the freedom, as Julian said. Yes. <laughs> Flowing with the movement. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. It just it don't feels fight awesome. The, just, don't it, fight the movement. It's liberating, for sure. But you do have to have confidence. Yeah. You know, because a lot of times, you know, and we're getting into a whole psyche, right. you know, of it all. <laughs> but a lot of times people hide behind right. the, uh, you know, behind the hair. Mm -hmm. You know, don't hide behind the hair. Open it up. Let yourself be beautiful. Yeah. Um, let yourself be liberated from it. Now, I have no problems with long hair as long as it's pretty long hair, right? Um, I love cutting long hair. Um, I've done, you know, quite a number of videos of doing long hair along with my good friend Lucy and my uh, Paul Mitchell team. And, you know, I think long hair can be beautiful, but it has to be a haircut, right? You know, cut... Combing it down and cutting a line and then lifting it up and putting a layer in, that's not a, you know, like a real haircut. Um, we do it, but that's something that you know, someone could learn how to do um, very simply and easily. Right? And I mean, I want my work to be more intricate. I want it to be more uh, thoughtful. I want it to be better about, more about the placement and about you know, the craftsmanship behind it. Um, and long hair, I think, has just as much of all of those qualities as short hair. Kathy is saying, I could never get scissor over comb down. Maybe you could give her some yeah, pointers yeah, yeah. on. Well, first things first, you know, realize that you don't have to go blazing speed, 
right? It's about, you know, um, it's, it's about structure. It, it, it's, it's about fluidity. Um, it's about movement within it. But it doesn't have to be fast, right? Okay. Um, one of the things that we do is, you know, we, we get the scissor and the comb working together, right? So I'm getting the hair to lay into the spine of the comb. As I lift up, that's the hair I'm cutting. I'm always cutting following the motion of the comb. I can only really cut the length of my blade or less. I don't want to take strokes this way. So I don't put it in and cut up. I don't put it in and cut up. I stay right at the front of the comb, just the length of the blade. And then I'm working in that upward motion. You notice also the hand, my ring finger and my pinky finger are resting. I can feel the curvature of the head. So I feel the curvature here, which you know, in a lot of ways mimics the curvature here of the head shape. So I can feel what the head's doing. And then from there, it's just nice, slow, and steady. Um, one of the other things that will make scissor over comb, um, I, I, I'll say easier, but you know, for lack of a better phrase at the moment, um, is a good shape to start with, right? You know, I see people come in and it's like, the hair's like this long and they just start blasting it away and blasting it away with no structure. And you lose all the nuances so of you shape. You lose all that, yeah. you know, and it's like you're whittling down, you know, too much at a time. Um, so, you know, get the shape in where you want it and then scissor over comb is a refinement. It's a cross check. All right, so starting to work this up. So the shape's there. I'm mimicking the shape, even though I am taking it shorter. But you notice also the amount of hair that I'm removing at one time. I mean, it's very small. Again, we, we, we play within sixteenths of an inch. It's like hair dust. It is. It's, it's, dust. it's fairy dust. Fairy dust. It's pixie dust. <laughs> You know, so again, everything very methodical, everything very structured, everything, you know, worked out. You know, so like this part of the head shape, I'm keeping it a little bit longer. I'm going to take this in a little bit more. I notice it's starting to look like velvet. Yeah, and that's ends. the thing. You know, you want it to have that kind of seamless velvety look. You know, so I mean, I love the softness of scissor over comb and the delicateness of it. I notice that you're keeping the, you know, your thumb blade is moving and the other one's staying a little bit yeah, I mean, it's in good. place. It's going to move a little bit, guys. I mean, you know, we don't want to get like all like all crazy, know, crazy and <laughs> stress that out. And, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's moving. You know, it's just relaxed. So the top hand, top part of hand is going to move a little bit. But, yeah, the thumb does the work. And your thumb, I notice, not being all the way through the... Oh, no. Would that affect scissor over comb? Well, it just gives me the light touch. It gives me the manu maneuver ability. Okay. Is that a right... Is that, a, is that yes. actually a word? <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay. Maneuverability, right? Just okay. by not putting the thumb in there, I can manipulate the scissor into a lot of different angles. Once you put your thumb into the uh, hole of the scissor, it's going to restrict mobility. You know, and this, this is like, this is moving meditation, guys. I could do this all day. It's just very relaxed, very zen, very peaceful. And Mark Marcel is still here, Yay, and Mark. he just said, lovely haircut, well done, with an exclamation. All right, thank you, Mark. <laughs> so I told you it was going to be Worth exciting. Worth your time. <laughs> I told you it was going to, we were going to keep the excitement moving. Julian doesn't waste anybody's time. No, no, it's no. It's not no. in his nature. Again, now just working that out, I'm going to blend this into here, right? So it's really mimicking the hand motion that I did, you know, and, you know, with this also, um, the first pass through with my hand allows me to see what the hair is going to do, and it kind of dictates, you know, what I'm going to do with scissor over comb. So, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable just going right in blazing you know, from not getting a basic shape in. We gotta work it down slowly, work it down very methodically. Um, you know, I, 
I, I cut, I tend to cut hair quite quickly, but you know, in a salon setting, I'm at about 45 minutes, you know, from start to finish. Um, so are, you, are you confident that you could do any haircut in around 45 minutes? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, scissor over comb may take just a little bit longer. Um, when I worked in the salon, you know, uh, and I had a guy coming in and I was doing quite a bit of scissor over comb or a lady with short hair, I always kind of knew that uh, I had to get the basic shape done quickly because there was a lot of refinement to it. Um, I kind of went through the basic shape a bit slower today because it's an educational piece. But if I was to do this prior to, you know, or if I was to do this just on my own time, um, I would get that shape in really quick. Not, not sloppy, but I would, I would not hesitate and waste any moment because I know that from there I'm going to have a lot of work of refinement with scissor over comb and pointing and things. Okay, Deanna has a, a comment and then also yep. um, a couple questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she said, interesting, I want to I want a class with you. Yep. Obviously, she's been watching. Um, how long have you been doing hair? I'm sure you know all the tricks of the trade. The freedom and the creativity and design is amazing. I love uh, the hair. I love that hairdressers have their own style. Um, and techniques and creativity in what we do. I think being confident and creative, uh, creative flow really works for hairdressers. And I think, you know, you really do have such a nice rhythm about your work. Um, but I, I guess her question is, how would she book a class with you? Um, well, the best thing to do would be to uh, contact me through my Instagram, Julie at Julian Pearl, P-E-R-L, um, and then we can kind of discuss what it is that you're looking for. Um, I mean, I customize classes. I'll do one-on-ones. I'll do in salon education. Um, if you're um, an independent worker, you know, and you want to get a few people together to do a group class with you and some of the hairdressers in your community, there's so many different ways to do it. Um, so many different ways to go about it, and it's it's really it's my part of the industry. It's what I do. Um, I am a full-time educator. Yes, I do have a private clientele. I'm kind of like a gypsy, has scissor wheel travel. Um, I go to people's houses, cut their hair, they come here, I cut their hair. Um, you know, uh, and the same thing with classes. I mean, I travel around the world doing classes in salons and in, in convention centers. And uh, I can see know. beautifully how you worked with the calic and designed the, the sections around it. Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Just see how it just kind yeah. of all fits into that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. You know, the best thing to do would be to contact me and then we can kind of chat about it. Um, Philip is asking, what is a technique um, without seeing the line? I'm trying little by little, um, but I can't make it smooth sometimes. Uh, with scissor or comb? Yeah. Okay. Um, eh, you know, I mean, it's just... Or if there was a line in here and you were trying to blend it out, is there any tips that you can give? I, I think... You know, trying to keep the motion really steady. Um, go right, find where the line is coming from. You know, because sometimes it's normally wherever it's sitting, it's actually coming from higher because the hair drops down. Um, and then, you know, you have to really micromanage it. You can see I'm just really lightly dusting the hair off because now, you know, we're, we're looking at less than sixteenths of an inches. Um, I don't even know what the measurement would be. Uh, Vicky Kalinowski is also asking, uh, what do you think of razor cuts? And then I'll and, and the people who use razors. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, I know this one guy named I know this one guy named Gerard. Who, 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 he, he's not too shabby when it comes to a razor. Um, I'm I'm wide open, guys. You know, I mean, I started my education with Sassoon, um, and always have been, you know, a very uh, you know, very heavily into scissor cutting, um, and I use, you know, clippers um, much more for refinements. Um, you know, I didn't do much with a razor, but over the last years that I haven't been with Sassoon, um, I've learned, you know, a little bit, not, you know, not as much as what, like, someone, a master as Gerard would know, but I'm wide open to, you know, whatever cuts the hair is cool with me. Um, and I think... It's knowing what tool 
So it's a means to an end. Yeah, yeah. And it's just knowing what tool is going to give you the effect that you want. But no, I'm not opposed to. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a scissor snob. Philip said, "Thank you for asking, answering the question." Oh, you're welcome, Philip. Um, and then also we had the question. Yeah, I've been cutting hair for a long time. <laughs> um, I started back in New York in 1990, um, and I did my apprenticeship with Vidal Sassoon on uh, Fifth Avenue, which was quite cool. And that's where I really learned, you know, the the beginning of my education, because it's 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 not finished yet. Right, so you just see manipulating that, just taking that a little bit. So you were at Sassoon the whole time that Tim Hartley was. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim was my international creative director. Yeah. Um, you know, and I have always had a really great relationship with Tim. Um, I was his New York chaperone. <laughs> when, when he has some great stories. Yeah, when he would come to New York, we always hung out and had such a, you know, such a great time. Uh, not only cutting hair together, but you know, just being friends and you know, just a wonderful, I see his wonderful influence person. in your work. You know, the, he he dives right in. He has a great rhythm. Well, Tim also, you know, he he was a trained barber. You know, he was he was a. Uh, men's hair cutter before he was a ladies hair cutter and I think if you watch Tim and I don't want to I mean it's so hard I mean I'm saying publicly you know how Tim cuts hair which is kinda you know but just my perception you know of it you know Tim cuts hair very simply but the the results are very intricate uh -huh. you know he's not about he's never from my his perception are so fashionable yeah and just my perception of watching him his haircuts are not a science project uh -huh. there it's it's a ballet of beauty mm -hmm. you know you watch this guy cut hair and you watch him manipulate and move it's just like <laughs> it's just graceful it's just absolutely gorgeous to watch him but you know the the, the uh, fashionable results the intricate results but very simple approaches uh, Deanna Lynn said that she's going to contact you. She oh, has cool. a shop that she manages, and we're excited to see you come into our shop. Nice. I would love to. Instagram is at Julian Pearl. P E R L. Yeah. And Lucas Doney says hello. Hey, Lucas. How are you, man? Uh, and Patty Gibbons uh, is commenting that she just loves what you just said. It's not over yet. We all need to continue learning forever. Oh, yeah. And Lucas is saying, why is Lisa Bot so cool? <laughs> <laughs> and Mark Marcel is saying, it's so true about Tim. Yeah. Matthew is uh, saying, this is the area I was referring to earlier about paying attention to the regrowth. Yes. Um, yeah, because, okay, cool, cool, Matthew. Um, definitely, I'm glad you, you reintroduced that question. Because with this, the color has to work. You know, if I take it too short, um, you know, I could create a line with the, with the color, which I don't want, you know, so just as important as the shape being right, the transition from the light um, of the color to the darkness of the roots has to be spot on. So, yeah. Nice. Thanks for bringing that up again, Matthew. But you see this, you just have this like little tuff of hair here. How fun is that? You know, that she can kind oh, of play around so with. so great like that. You know, um. And I think it's, it's the little things. It's the seam on the dress that makes it look beautiful, right? It's not always just the shape of the dress. You know, the little, little subtleties that we add that make our haircut special. Matthew said you're welcome for bringing that back. Uh, thanks, Matthew. He's like your guardian angel. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. But you know what's so cool is the way that it grows out, right? So yeah. the, the detail and everything, it just grows out so beautifully. And, you know, it can be four weeks and it can be six weeks and all the way through it just looks amazing. Well, that's the thing. It's like a haircut should look good from the first day until the day they mm -hmm. come back to the salon, right? You know, it has to last. I mean, I don't let the secret out, guys. I know we want our clients to come back in every <laughs> four weeks, but your haircuts should last longer, right? The, the only difference it should be from day one to the uh, last day of that six weeks or so is that it should just be longer. It should grow out just as nice. It should hold its shape. Um, you know, and a good haircut in my mind, it has to look good today, it has to look good tomorrow, and it has to look good six weeks from now. Shelby is asking, um, is it easier to do scissor over comb with different lengths of scissor? Um, it depends, Shelby. You know, it's like if I'm working a really square shape, I may have a longer blade, but this is a little bit more curved, so I'm working with a shorter blade, so I can kind of get the curvature in there. And that's a five and a half? This is a five and a half. Um, like one of the things, 
like these are my B Max seven inch, right? So these are awesome. These are great for cutting bobs. These are great for cutting um, scissor over comb. They're not so good for cutting your finger because <laughs> your finger will land on the floor with these suckers, right? <laughs> Super sharp. But also, when I'm working with a long scissor, it allows me to reach. Like, you get the shot on there? Yeah. See, my hands are out of the way. And I work this in, and I can cut one hair at a time working like this, so working backhand. Just have to be well aware of where the blades are. Oh, God, yeah. And you'll notice I'll use the comb to push the ear out of the way to shield the ear, uh -huh. right? And then I'm working there, right? And these two can rest on top of one another, and I can get my shape in. So I don't have the problem my hands being so close and so tight. In yeah, there. now the head's round, so it just moves out of the way, you know, yeah. where you're... The part of the blade that you're not using. And I can see how that would be really great for cutting like really boxy bobs. Yeah. And you'll notice like a lot of what they call barber scissors, they'll have a short hand on a long blade. Okay. Right? That's because again, I'm keeping my hand away from the head and working in. This is funny. Gerard will love this. This, <laughs> this I learned from one of the barbers at the Vidal Sassoon New York Salon named Gaspar. And this is the Sicilian barbering technique. That's what he used to say. No. I'm like, because I would watch him do the backhand, and he'd be like, so much pride yeah, in the culture. This is the Sicilian way. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome, man. So the Sicilian barbering technique. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll let it live in Gaspar's <laughs> memory of working with him. Amazing barber. I was so fortunate, man. I, had to, I got the opportunity to work with some of the greatest barbers, some of the greatest hairdressers in the world. Um, and... You know, for me, for barbering and much, what, what I consider, I mean, I, I call it a European approach, right? A lot more scissor work, uh, a lot more refinement with the clippers. Um, and a lot of that's to do with the textures that, you know, you're, you're dealing with. Um, a little bit of softer shapes and things like that. But much more manually, not that the clippers aren't manual, but much more opening and closing, working with the scissors um, rather than the clipper work. So getting close to being finished, guys. I mean, I think if you look at the profile, the head shape's starting to come together. Yeah. So okay. Just, you're just really working nicely with her jaw, with her occipital bone. We have the length. So you can just see the curvature from every area. I like this top a little bit fuzzy. Uh -huh. You know, I think it looks really good. Um, I like the cutoff, like where it just kind of rounds up and then goes boop and stops <laughs> yeah. and then goes into the longer length. Yeah. Um, you know, through here, I'll look into it, just make sure everything's really clean. I noticed that where you transitioned, you have a little short hair on that side of the calic. Is that to keep that long hair moving forward? Um, or, or, is, or sometimes you move that line back further, just depending on well, like uh, where I what stopped? you feel like. Yeah. Oh, what I wanted to do is follow the head shape up to the curve where okay. it flattens out. Cool. So I let the, uh, the, the head shape itself dictate where I stop and start. That's the, it, it's kind of a cool way of approaching stuff, guys. It's like, I don't decide what to do. The head tells me what to do. Right? I don't decide what to do. The texture tells me what to do. You know, John Guest used to be like, we'd be demoing together, and John would always be like, Julian, is the hair talking to you again? <laughs> He's like, are you hearing the voices? Uh. <laughs> you know? I'm like, yes, John, I can hear it. Um, John's also an amazing barber, an amazing hairdresser. You're getting a lot of praise. Mark Marcel is saying gorgeous with uh, five hearts. Um, Dady Kine, um, just an amazing guy. Share his knowledge, even with the tips. You know, you're just so open about, you know, you give so freely. Oh, yeah. You have to. And then somebody mentioned the Pray for London, and I think, you know, London is going through a hard time right oh, now. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, very, very hard. Our, our British, our British family over there. All right, so I know you're going to ask. These are the Andes. Uh, all right, I like this, this, um, this model here, right? And one of the reasons why I like it is because I don't have the interchangeable blades. Um, I don't like to take the blades on and off. This will go from a one to a bunch of zeros, which I'm assuming is quite short, right? Um, more zeros would make it even shorter, I guess. But, you know, <laughs> I thought zero was just... It's funny because Gerard, I always tell Gerard, I'm like, one plus one doesn't always equal two. Like, you can have more than one zero, but isn't it just zero? It is. You know? I mean, but we just have a lot of zeros. Um, so I, li I like the ability to be able to, you know, go from open to closed blade. Um, anything longer 
I'll work a lot with my comb and with the clippers. Um, I may pop a guard on if I'm mowing it down. Um, but I don't really need, I don't need to change, you know, the blades as much because if it's going to get any longer, I'm going to do, use a different tool. So I'm just taking the neckline down. These, uh, the Andis, these are very, they're, they're quite strong, they're quite powerful. I have to be really honest with you guys because you were all commending me on my honesty so much. Um, one of the reasons I also bought these is because they're black and silver. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't understand why a company would make clippers like funny colors. They should be, in my mind, they should be look like a tool. They should be metal. <laughs> Shelby is laughing. Yeah. <laughs> I never understood the negative zeros either. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, I mean... It's like, it's like uh, you ever see Spinal Tap? Uh -huh. <laughs> He's going on about, my amp goes to 11. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, wouldn't you just make 10 louder? Yeah. Well, yeah, but mine goes to 11. So, I mean, it's yeah. like the same kind of concept. Uh -huh. You know, this has five zeros, but is it zero, zero? No. I like silliness, guys. Yeah. What about scissors with dragon handles? Ooh. <laughs> That's Actually, better than scissors without dragon hands. Yeah, it, I mean, anything with a dragon on it is cool. Yeah. That you was know? from Matthew. Nice. <laughs> if you could have, like, dragon handles or, like, uh, like uh, wolf fangs, <laughs> anything like that is going to make it better. You know, we should try that. We should start... Oh, let's turn this around because my uh, Wi-Fi gets wonky. We should, we should start selling stuff. Not like, this is made from, dra <laughs> from dragon tail. Dragon bone. Yeah. Cobalt scissors have nothing on our dragon bone scissors. There's it. That's it. It's the strongest you could possibly get. All right, so just getting the hair off the hairline. I'm going to do a final, final touch up with my with my scissor and comb. Just making sure I have every piece of hair right where it needs to be. You know, again, the tolerances, you know, the... the, the Lucy uh, must have got pulled over on her way over here. <laughs> the, no, she went to buy the gun. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a uh, two-hour wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a background check. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, like, I love when the tolerances of your haircut are so small, right? Like, the room for forgiveness. Yeah. You know, and that's what always has really excited me about short hair. Um, and not to say that, you know, it's a, it, it's a free pass to do sloppy long hair, but with short hair, you just, you, you can't fluff it. It's either right or it's not. You know, I love Mark Hayes when he said, you know, if it looks good, it's good, right? But with short hair, it has to be good to look good. So yeah. Michelle Sch Schneider said, I think women like pink and all those fun colors just because we're girly and it sets us apart from just black all the time. Anything uh, colorful or blingy is our jam. Nice, I love that. That was Michelle. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And it's true, I mean, I am, I am a boy. <laughs> so I like black, silver, and dragon's breath. <laughs> <laughs> so I will let you have the right, Michelle, to have your beautiful... Now, if somebody wanted to use thinning clipper. scissors, would that be okay at this point? Uh, and if they did, what would you say, um, you know, Pointer-wise, uh, Frida is asking. Um, I, I mean, it, it's not a tool that I, I use customarily. I mean, I'm not a, again, I'm not opposed to it. Um, I have some great friends that are really... What would be the good application of it in this point, at this point? For me, I would do it in through the longer lengths. In through the... Well, I'll start out with the shorter lengths. Um, I would start with the shorter length and just hit the tips... Right? So just like scissor over comb, yeah, and just, yeah, just, just putting on, a little bit of blend in the yeah, ends. Yeah, just a little bit of softness through the tips. But then on the longer lengths, what I would do is I would start at the shortness and then hit it like one, two, three. Okay. You know, and then so let that it, would taper it to it, it where would it's kind finer of marry it together yeah. a little bit. Cool. Um, I want this to look clunky, and I, I know that's not a good word for for you, Lisa. I'm good. But, um, you know, I want it to look like... But you know where it's falling in yeah. a shape. You know, it, so it, it's there, it's purposeful, 
Um, I'm not trying. If I wanted to look, if I wanted this guy's to look blended, I would have just blended it. Yeah. Right. So I want it to look like, oh, there's a piece. Like she has like a little attachment. Yeah. You know, like a weft on her head. Yeah. Um, and it moves so nicely. And it'll, it'll keep Lucy happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's really Lucy's. Mark is saying Lisa is so pretty. Oh, yeah. thanks, Marcus. Getting a lot of compliments. So I'm just about there, guys. And I then think. somebody said Sorry. black is so boring. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I know, but it's so strong. You can see the shape of Chad Ronka. Hair you know, t-shirt. Yeah. You know what I love? I mean, I love like everyone. Everyone has an opinion. I love it. You know, it's like um, I would never want people just to agree with me just because I said it. Yeah. Don't agree with me, please. Yeah. I want your opinion. He likes you a know? good fight. Um, well, it makes you think about things differently. Yeah. You, could, you could look at something the complete opposite way that I look at it, and I want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. I want to see where you're I coming love that. from. You know, it's like if you're a razor cutter, like me and Gerard, we talk about the differences. We talk about this. We talk about it. If you cut with thinning shears, I would never tell you that's wrong. I want to listen to what you know. What's your thought process on it? Natalie and, said, and "So versatile. I love it." And Jeannie said, "Great haircut. Love watching your work." Uh, thank you. Can you Jeannie, push it back and forth on the top one more time? Yeah. Well, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add a little product here. I know you guys oh, are cool. going to ask. This is um, clean cut, right? So this is from Mitch. This is a styling cream. This is, you know, like I, I used this last time. Um, this is uh, predominantly it's it's a men's line, but for me, um, product has no gender, right? So it's good for short hair. Um, and it has a nice creamy texture to it, which I think is good for molding Lisa's hair, right? So I can put it on and I can play with it. I can pull areas out. I think you said go Jill said, that way. This has been so awesome. I learned so much. Thank you. Oh, uh, excellent. Yeah, I love the way you're crisscrossing the top. That looks so amazing. Yeah. You know, you just kind of mess around with it. It's like hair like this to me, it's like, it's like Play-Doh. Have fun with it. You know, change, make different shapes. Don't be so, it has to be this way. You know, mess around, have fun. Mark asks, is that water-based? Yes. The product? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and I can remember back in the day, we used to work with, like, a lot of really heavy petroleum-based <laughs> products, one particularly called Dax. Um, and when I had more hair, my hair being longer on my head, you know, I used to style my hair with a lot of that, but the buildup was so dramatic. Like, I used to have so much product in my hair, the inside of my motorcycle helmet... Oh God. Which is like filled with That's product. Nasty. So I just put my helmet on. To just start riding to work. Your head my hair on. would be perfect. It's like that, a jerry curl. I know that's gross. <laughs> I know that's gross, guys. But again, I'm a boy. Margie is saying, "I, I have never felt so too. inspired." Uh, excellent. What a compliment you, is that? So I start now. The products in the hair. I'm just combing it down, right, and getting the smoothness to the texture. I'm excited. I'm doing a shoot on uh, Listen to this heckler. Who's that? I love you, Jules. Robert Crumians. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Hey, RC. <laughs> I'm getting Robert nervous. is such a fantastic person. So smart. <laughs> Isn't a smarter, you know, person, oh, you know, with putting shows together, always, you know, so Robert, inspiring. Robert is genius. Yeah, he is. And, uh, as much as he I knows love, all the moving parts, so, yeah. you know how it's all going to fit together. As much as What's I up, love uh, working with him, I love hanging out with him too. Just a great individual. Yeah. Um, but I was saying uh, this Tuesday, Wednesday, I got the opportunity to work with Lucy, and we're doing a shoot for Mitch, uh, and I can't wait. I'm not going to give too much information other than it's going to be absolutely, yeah. absolutely amazing, right? So now you see, I smoothed out the hair in certain areas, and then. From there, so this gives you to some length to dress. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I figure not just you know one trick, you, 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 as Robert would say. Yeah. You, yeah. It's not a one trick pony. Yeah. Right. You should be able to move it around and play with it. Um, you know, here's the thing, guys. You should be able to style it, but you don't have to. Yeah. Right. A good, good haircut always has the ability to be styled, but you don't have to style it. That's the Vidal influence on it. Right? It's like it should fall into place, look beautiful with minimal effort, but you can always make it look more exciting. So you can take your products, whether, you know, like I said, I'm using the, uh, the Clean Cut, which is a styling cream from Mitch. You it's similar work. to molding mud, some of the outside, right? Yeah, there's so many different, yeah, yeah, you know, so many different variations of it. 
We all find the one that we like, but I could be working with hairsprays. I could be pin setting this. Matthew's saying how nice it is to see you not cutting a mannequin. Yeah, oh, dude, I know. <laughs> I was getting worried because I was thinking like people were going to think like, oh, eventually a guy here and he cuts yeah. doll heads. Yeah. Right? But we're doing that for the series. Yeah. You know, we're doing that for the classic series and I'm doing that for the education. I know you're just messing with me, Matthew, and I love it. Um, like I said, I, I, I like to be able to give it so I can take it. Um, but uh, now that we're moving on and we got a lot of the series done, we're going to be incorporating, you know, more real live applications of the series. Cool. Uh, but you got to learn the fundamentals first, guys. You know the fundamentals, and when you're doing the fundamentals, you want to be able to do them as pure as possible. But you always have to keep in mind, we're not learning how to cut hair to cut doll heads. We're learning how to cut hair on doll heads to do people. Ah, nice. Right? So, you know, we're going to start taking it. We're going to start having a little bit more fun with it, um, bringing in models, bringing in different guest artists and things like that. I mean, we got a whole group of West Coast hairdressers that are just absolutely amazing that I want to start featuring. Um, they can come and hang out with me. You can cool. go swimming afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> we can have a barbecue and just cut some beautiful hair. Right? So, um, that sounds great. Again, this is... Uh, Haircut on my wonderful friend Lisa, who's the uh, what are you the co-founder? Co-founder yes. of Straight Pin. Straight Pin Studio LA. There we go. Um, and you know uh, I've been cutting Lisa's hair. We go back you know a long, <laughs> long time. Um, I worked on a variation of a crop, not the classic approach to it. But you know when I talk about crop, I'm referring to the length of hair that I'm cutting. Just this really beautiful 90 degree layer through the underneath with a slight graduation on the edge. Um, I worked through the top and I took my sections coming across, right? On the one side, I took my sections coming across on the other side, which left me this triangle, the base of the triangle in the back, the apex of the triangle in the front, of this connection through the top. Um, blue dry it, did a little bit of pointing, a little bit of scissor over comb. Um, once it was dry, um, I worked with my uh, styling cream, which is clean cut, right? And uh, from there, just smoothed the hair out really nicely, got it all into place, and then just lightly picked up pieces that I wanted to expand, you know? And um, I think Lisa looks great. Nice. And I think she'll have got fun with Lots of comments. Uh, Starcat is saying, gorgeous. Thank you for sharing your talent, inspiring us to keep getting better. And Angelica says, you're awesome. Have a great day Thank and you. love the haircut. Yeah. Now, Lucy, you owe me some color. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.